This is a rare case, unfortunately, and the patient is a 54-year-old female present to me for evaluation of chronic burning pain and numbness to her left lower lip and the chin area. Story starts uh, back in June 2015 when she was seen by her dentist and apparently many years ago she had a root canal treatment on a first molar tooth, number 19, and the tooth started to have more problems so she was seen by her dentist again and they wanted to save the tooth and what they do usually is retreat the root canal. The concept again is to remove the nerve ending from the roots of the teeth and then fill them and so you won't have any chronic infection and you're able to hold on to that tooth for much longer. But the, the problem uh, occurred when some of the material that are used to fill these canals had gone out of the apical portion of the root and inside the inferior alveolar canal, which is the nerve that gives you sensation to a lip and the chin and the gingival tissue around the area. So once the anesthetic wore off, she contacted her dentist and told her that she's got this severe burning sensation and numbness. And she was seen and by a various practitioner and and the CT scan, uh, cone beam scan was done and it showed this uh, calcium hydroxide paste which is used for filling the portion of the uh, canal had been pushed through the inferior alveolar canal all along from the mental framing all the way down to the second molar area. And she was seen by a peripheral nerve specialist, a neurologist and various uh, type of surgeon and they did not offer her any surgical option and they basically relied on medication and you know, pain management type of a thing, neurologic drugs to try to control the threshold of the pain. Uh, so she came to me and after evaluating the scan and reviewing her symptoms and evaluation of the nerve, we decided to take it to the operating room, basically remove all this toxic material that could damage the nerve and its function. So I told her that we most likely have much more improvement, but there's a slight chance that they could have some residual uh, deficit in that area because the, the tissue has been injured and the material has been in close proximity to the inferior alveolar nerve. So we took it to the operating room and we basically uh, found the you know, mental nerve and unroofed the bone on the canal that the nerve is, is housed and freed up the nerve from from the anterior por portion of it in the mental framework region all the way back to the second molar and freed up and removed more than 95% of this uh, calcium hydroxide paste from the canal and washed it out and completely and basically closed her back up. And she was followed and she has much improvement and is slowly improving. She doesn't have any burning sensation anymore. She still has a little tiny amount of uh, uh, deficit as far as numbness is concerned, but much improved. Uh, the outcome it was great and the thing about nerve injury is there are various ways of getting the nerve injured. One, one is by local injection, but there is uh, the needle itself that grazes the, the nerve or the toxicity of the local anesthetic. There are different agents that we use and some are stronger and there have been publications in the literature that some of the specific type of local anesthetic have a higher risk of potential chemical injury. The other way of injuring the inferior alveolar nerve or lingual nerve is doing dirt molar surgery, wisdom teeth removal, or osteotomies in the lower jaw, or placing dental implants, or root canal treatment. If the nerve is close to the apices of the dentition and you're taking a file to basically remove all the nerve from the root of the teeth, sometimes you could injure the nerve by using as a sharp instrument, basically making a pin, pin prick out of that nerve area and that could cause injury. The other thing is heat generation or compression. The nerve swells in that canal and is not able to, it's like having a, a, a swelling in, the, in your brain that the skull is controlling the volume that the tissue is able to, to swell. Same concept in the nerve canal. When the nerve gets irritated, or have some bleeding or some swelling around the area, the nerve could get compression. And that's what we call almost like a compartment syndrome. So the concept again comes back to the same thing, prevention, early detection, and referral to appropriate uh, centers.